Welcome back to Cheddar News. A new era officially kicks off in college sports beginning today. NCAA athletes are able to make money from a wide variety of business ventures without losing their eligibility. Now that while this was previously expected to only help athletes in certain states, the Division I Board of Directors approving an interim name, image, and likeness policy yesterday, making athletes in all 50 states eligible. We spoke with former New York Giants running back and three-time pro bowler Tiki Barber about the new policies that he has been a proponent of. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, this is an exciting day for student athletes across the country as they can now have an opportunity to take advantage of the brands that they build at the universities that they attend. Obviously, there's a, a huge monetary implication to this NIL legislation going into effect across the country. But I just love this opportunity for student athletes. I think that ultimately, when they have a chance to grow themselves professionally and create a business around the successes that they have on their respective playing field, it's good for everyone in involved. You know, as someone who played four years at the University of Virginia, then of course went to play uh, in the NFL with, in my opinion, one of the best teams in the country, the New York Giants. Um, I wonder if you can take us. <laughs> I wonder if you can take us through a player's mindset, at least the collegiate player's mindset, in terms of right now. What may be some of the biggest changes that they're going to be experiencing? You know, from recruiting all the way through the rest of their collegiate years. Yeah, there's a lot uh, to unpack here, Alicia, and I think one of the great things for student athletes is that. And now they can look at different platforms and, and, and look at their brands and really pay attention to what they're trying to put out to the public. Their brands matter. So they, they're not just tweeting or, 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 or putting out on social media things that are just, just random and nonsensical. Uh, it forces them in some ways, at least if they're conscious of this, to be smart business people with their brand. And it's why I'm excited to be a part of a company called Display, which is a social media app that allows uh, influencers, in this case, students, athletes, to share in the ad revenue. We partnered with Influencer, which is the leading software a brand developer for college athletes and teammates, to create some uh, a place that's safe, that's also NCAA compliant. I think that's one of the most important things to, to highlight, and it gives them great latitude to put out social media content and also be compensated for it. So there's a lot that they have to think about. But I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an emerging technology in a lot of ways, an emerging opportunity for them uh, that they're going to take advantage of because these college kids are smart. right? They've been growing up with, with, with databases and, and technology and social media their entire lives, and now they can monetize. Yeah, a lot coming at them, you know, certainly today, but there's a lot of, you know, opportunities and resources out there, certainly the one that you just mentioned there with, with your company. I wonder if you can just speak to the interim policy going into effect in all 50 states and how critical that may or, or may not be, especially in terms of, you know, had it played out in just certain states, the effect that that would have in terms of, you know, collegiate athletes, you know, going to certain states versus the others and the overall effect on, uh, you know, the sport. That's a, that's a great point, Alicia. If, if certain states had had NIL legislation available for student athletes and others had not, the competitive, the competitive advantage would have been enormous. And so by getting a blanket, uh, uh, a, a blanket uh, offer out there, a, uh, a blanket, um, uh, I, I guess, legislation out there, it allows every state and all of these universities to compete on an even playing field. And... Uh, I know that the NCAA, they struggled with this, uh, let's be honest. They asked Congress for help. And when you ask Congress for help, they take it and they run with it. There are a lot of competing bills uh, that ultimately were kind of running uh, against what the NCAA would have wanted. And so they, they, they were forced to make a decision. But I think it's a decision that all student athletes are excited about or should be excited about. And again, it, there's a lot to navigate for these, uh, these young kids, these young men and women. But I think ultimately... Um, they will they will get it. Right? These kids are smart. They understand yeah. how social media works. And once they understand that they can share revenue, like with display, um, uh, if they post on social media, then they'll they'll really they'll, they'll really benefit from it. I wonder if you can put in context what this means for all collegiate athletes, especially those who don't go pro, right, and and get the opportunity yeah. uh, that you had to go pro. What this means to have the opportunity to capitalize on their collegiate uh, name, image, and likeness. Yeah, so here's the thing. Like, we think about this, this, this changing monetary policy for student athletes as football and basketball, maybe baseball, hockey, some of the revenue sports. 
But think about a, a great soccer player or a, another Olympic athlete. They have track and field a star. I think of Sydney McLaughlin uh, from uh, the United States, 400 meter earlier when she was in college. Uh, she becomes viral because of how talented she is. And it's not a money sport, track and field, but she becomes viral. Um, heretofore, she hasn't been able to monetize on that. Now, now, if she's a freshman or a sophomore, track and field, lacrosse, soccer, uh, volleyball player, and, and it does a great job at building a brand, then she can not only share an ad revenue, but she can also have opportunities off of their respective playing field. So say they want to run a camp. Uh, say they want to run some sort of um, a, a side business in their off season in order to make money off of the brand that they've developed as student athletes, they now can. And I think it's, it's great. It's an empowering. Uh, it also creates, I think, an opportunity for these young you know, men and women to develop a financial savvy, uh, to, to manage their finances, to plan and to, and to budget and to think ahead on how they can make the most of what they build as student athletes themselves. Before I let you go, one, one last question here. You know, what more would you like to see on college athletes' uh, compensation going forward? And, and do you think that we'll get to a point where some of these schools are paying athletes uh, directly? I don't think that that's ever going to happen, and I don't think it should happen. We know that amateurism, while a fallacy in so many ways, is still paramount to the intercollegiate uh, experience. And so I think by having companies like Teammate and Influencer partnering with companies like uh, like display that we are, or, or or cameo, creating these opportunities that are that are NCAA compliant, but also uh, opportunistic, creates a creates a fantastic platform for student athletes to really work at building their brand. And again, this is these aren't handouts, and I think a lot of people will will hear that this NIL legislation and think, well, they're just going to get money now from the school. It's not what it's about. It's just like any influencer wanting to build a profile and build a brand for themselves and be able to monetize that brand. These student athletes now just have the opportunity to do that. They still have to do it, but they have the opportunity to do it. I think paying directly is, um, that, that could get dangerous and that could get very dicey. That falls more in line with the Supreme Court decision that allows for additional compensation for student athletes as long as it's around educational expenses. This is, this is significantly different in IEL. This is really about branding and having different companies who support this type of action for student athletes, diving in, um, you know, making a name for themselves, borrowing the brands or partnering with the brands of these student athletes and doing some really cool and interesting campaigns. And I know I'm excited about it. I'm not even a student athlete. I know these student athletes are, are going to relish it. All right, thanks to Tiki Barber there, former New York Giants running back and three-time Pro Bowler.